Well, I'm a little sleepy today, and welcome to Dear Anxiety. And I'll tell you, we'll, we're going to back it in here. I'm gonna, we're going to we're talking about sleep and the lack of it because uh, what happens when anxiety interrupts your sleep? But more specifically, what happens when anxiety interrupts your child's sleep? Of course, you may be sound asleep, but you have to now help your child. So now we have two people or three people that are not sleeping or four or five. So that's what we're going to talk about today on Dear Anxiety. Dear Anxiety is the show about mental health. It's about how we deal with our thoughts and feelings. It's about not physical fitness, but emotional fitness. We don't know what that means, but we're going to explore it together. What does it mean to be well in today's world? And thank God I'm not doing this alone because that would not be, that would be a different show. Uh, that would be how not to get sleep and have a breakdown. But we're not going to do that today. What we are going to do is we're going to invite in my partner and friend, uh, Rini Jane, because Rini uh, is an expert in applied positive psychology. She's been working in this field of well-being, uh, resilience, teaching resilience. She has a company called GoZen, GoZen.com where you can find the most amazing tools through animation. She teaches resilience skills, uh, anger transformation, anxiety relief, all of these valuable skills at GoZen.com. She studied originally at the University of Pennsylvania with uh, Dr. Martin Seligman, who was the father of applied positive psychology. She is the queen of super heavy funk, and here she is. Rini? Yes, I love that. Every week I get a new title. That's my favorite. That's right. You are the queen. You're the queen of intervention. And, the, um, and, and so as the queen, now I'm going to guess that this is something. Um, and, and so as the queen, now I'm going to guess that this is something, this, this lack of sleep uh, due to anxiety is something that you've experienced firsthand. You say that every week. I must be the most dysfunctional person on earth. <laughs> but, <laughs> you, <useful> advice. <laughs> but you but you said that's perfect because it's a, we never stop learning and we and we always everybody goes through this, no matter what your knowledge base is or what your level of awareness is, you're gonna go through it. I am going to tell you that I probably have not had a good night's sleep in about six years. <laughs> My daughter is six years old. So is it coincidence or not? <laughs> I don't know. Complete coincidence. <laughs> Complete yeah. coincidence. Right. No, I definitely have had many phases of sleep deprivation <laughs> for various reasons. Definitely the kids, you know, um, certainly sometimes there's uh, who knows what's going on, something going on that just wakes you up. The other night, I woke up at three in the morning. I shot up. You know why? Because the tooth fairy forgot to come. Oh, my goodness. I was going around my house with my phone light, right? Like sneaking around the house, looking for dollars <laughs> to put under her pillow in any case. And then I couldn't get back to sleep. Ugh. So, yes, sleep deprivation. But, you know, when we don't get enough sleep and our child is not getting enough sleep because their sleep is interrupted by anxiety, it can cause a vicious cycle of, I don't have a word for it, but I have a sound for it. Arrgh! That's oh, the sound. Good sound. Good sound. How do you manage it? How do you deal with it? I mean, what do you do? Sleep deprivation is a hard one. When you <laughs> wake up and you haven't gotten enough sleep and we have all been there, you're just looking at the day as if it's going to be the longest thing ever. Because what changes? You still have to do everything. You're still making the lunches or getting ready for whatever. You're still doing all of the stuff. It's not like you can crawl into bed most days and just take a day off from life. And so you have to know to yourself that when you are sleep deprived, number one, it's temporary. It's going to pass. Number two, meditation really helps in this situation. It can be an extremely restorative thing. So even like a, a brief amount of meditation or a tiny nap if you can catch a cat nap in the middle of the day. But also what I really want you to know, because I feel like this cycle of you not sleeping or you're, you not sleeping because your child is not sleeping feels like it's going to go on forever. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. It's always going to be like this. Either I'm crawling into bed with my child, my child is crawling into bed with me, or they're continually waking up and coming out and asking me what if questions. Right, Ed? 
That's right. If this happens. Oh, 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 it's a lot of what ifing. But with my daughter, when she goes to bed, that's when her mind wakes up. And so she will ask questions. She'll wonder about the universe or about the darkest things you've ever heard in your life in very clear detail. Oh, yes. The emotional floodgates and the creative floodgates open, right? It's yes. Like, why do we lie down and the anxiety monsters just come to life you know, when we lie deluge. down? It's a deluge, yeah. It's amazing. There is actually, you know, this amazing capacity for the brain to just wander. I often think of Back to the Future. Remember the movie with the sure. DeLorean? Sure, <laughs> like, yeah. And Doc Brown and Marty McFly. And him zipping into the future and zipping into the past. And, you know, in the first movie, they go to the past and they get stuck. Well, often we're doing that with our brains. We are like that movie, like Doc Brown. Our brain is a DeLorean and we're getting stuck in the future and just constantly what ifing. Well, what if this goes wrong tomorrow? And what if I forget my backpack? And what about that test? And what if no one sits me at lunch? And just the what ifing gets us crazy. And in that moment, when we're lying in our bed and we have this incredible capacity to really visualize what if, we can activate our bodies. Our bodies can turn on at that moment. The worry alarm can go off. And that anxiety and that feeling of danger to our kids when they're saying they're really worried and the look on their face is that they are really worried, it's real, right? So when your daughter is having that experience, Ed, that's real for her. Absolutely. This is when you're, you know, when I'm depleted and I haven't slept in, it's been many, many years and I'm, I'm not really even that familiar with what it's like to be alert. Are you um, human? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not human. I'm, I'm from another planet called, uh, called Deprivo. And it's like a, depri everything is deprived on Deprivo. Um, we drive to Prevos, we drive to Priuses, uh, everything is, no, but I, but what I'll, what I'll say is is just that you you're on, on alert mode uh but you're not uh, you're not conscious and clear you're sleep deprived but you you feel like you have to be on alert mode so you want to decelerate instead of accelerate but my my mind tells me to accelerate so i can get through it faster and it's a myth because you're not going to get through it faster um you actually need to like you were saying meditation often works slowing down works and just yes. saying, slowing down of any kind really works. This is an opportunity to slow down. Um, and I would use it as an opportunity to slow down if I weren't living on planet Deprivo. Let's get you back to Earth. Let us bring us, oh, let's bring all of ourselves back to Earth, okay. especially those of us that have had some sleep interruption. And let's try to help our kids with this. So you know what one of the interesting statistics is? Guess what percentage of the day our mind is wandering? Uh, Yours is wandering right now. <laughs> yes, 92.5. <laughs> no, maybe on Deprivo. <laughs> maybe yeah. on planet Deprivo. Yeah. No, on Earth with humans, it's 47% of the time. So basically half the time that you are doing something, your mind is on some other thing, right? You're thinking about, oh, I have to buy these groceries tomorrow. I have to do this thing. Or you're thinking about something that has happened. So this is just a common human experience that we're traveling to the past and we're traveling to the future. So 47% of the time, I thought that was an important statistic. And, you know, the CDC is now saying that basically all of us have sleep issues. <laughs> That's the stat. <laughs> it's like mm. everyone. Mm. It's a mess, essentially. So what do we do about it? How do we help our kids? You know what I did this week? I jotted some stuff down. Are you proud of me? Well, that's that's 40 that's 80% good. Uh, because the 47%, <laughs> I know you've got you've got I don't know when your mind has time to wander, but you uh, but at any rate, that's really good that you Oh, I'm a wandering queen. I I have a feeling I am above way above that average. No, oh, but you I, but you, you wrote Yeah, go ahead. I relish in the wandering sometimes, but I do get caught in rumination at times, right? When I'm thinking about a mistake I've made in the past and it can play like a record, like a broken record. Oh, I guess we don't play records anymore. People still say that. <laughs> yeah, and they will because it doesn't sound as good to say. It sounds like it's like a broken streaming device. <laughs> 
Yeah, that doesn't sound good. No. So you guys know what I mean. That one thought that plays in your mind over and over and over and over again. So I've been I've been known to do that. But no, I do I do do my mind wandering, my fair share of mind wandering. But yes, this week I actually have nine tips. Okay, because this is a hard one. What do we do? What do we wow. do when our child cannot sleep and we are uber frustrated because we, however we get our child down to sleep at whatever age they are, right? I'm saying child, but this could be a teenager. When they go to sleep, all of a sudden, don't your shoulders relax for a moment? Oh my goodness, it's my time. But then when you don't get your time, all of a sudden you hear their voice or you see their little face. <laughs> You're like, what? Yeah. Why are you up? Yeah. Why are you up? Yes. So, of course, you know, like any of these skills, in order to help our kids, we need to try to be the highest, best versions of ourselves. And so we really need to practice self-care when it comes to ourselves. You really need to provide for yourself and nourish yourself a little bit and know that there's light of the, at the end of the tunnel and know that you can get through this. It's first and foremost, I'm not even listing it as one of these nine things that we're going to talk about today. Well, I think, you know, the thing is we talk, we do say this is something that you do for your, for your kids. You want your kids to sleep. If, if you're not sleeping, if you're not at rest, if you're not conscious, if you're not making conscious choices, if you're not the best human being that you can be, the most effective human being that you can be, the, and that means, you know, understanding what's going on with you or me, then all of it sort of becomes moot because because it's really about your relationship with yourself right and and you know being a good parent is being you know is being human is being fully yourself and how can you do that so i feel like we put it on the kids it's like well if they were sleeping then everything would be great yeah and it's, and it's like no no when you're most alive and you're at your fullest potential that's what that's what that's what it is. You have kids, but you have to be a person. If you're not a person, if you're slogging through life, you know, yeah, I mean, of course, it's very difficult to deal with your kids. But it's not your kids that that really is the focus here. It is, but not without you. You're the biggest part of the equation. You're the biggest part of that puzzle, you know? And it's like if you don't sleep, Who's going to, you know, what kind of choices can you make? What That's kind of so profound. That is like the myth of the week that if my child does X, then I would be happy. If my child were sure. doing this, then sure. everything would be fine. Yes. Yes. And it's not, you know, you know how it is with like money and jobs and all kinds of things or relationships. If this would only happen, everything would be fine. Well, no. Uh, everything is fine as it is, but not because of a thing, even a child. Um, this is not about your kid, you know, not being a good sleeper. Um, and I know that that sounds easy to say, um, especially from a nutcase like me, <laughs> but, but I will say that it, it, it is not about my daughter. Wow. That's amazing. And that also gives you control. Because often we feel incredibly frustrated that we can't control the outcome that our child is having. We try so hard to give our best, and yet if we don't see progress, that is frustrating to us. But if we control ourselves and we are the driver of our own progress, and that really affects our own well-being, well, that puts the control back in our hands. And I think that that's amazing and profound. Well, yeah, the, 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 the control, they've substituted the word control for choice. And the choice is, the, you know, the balance is the choices, the conscious choices that I might be able to make throughout the day. And if I made two or three of them, it would enhance my life tremendously. And I don't care if it's, I'm going to pick up this Kleenex right now. <laughs> Making a conscious choice actually changes your life. And it doesn't matter how small it is. I love that. And I love the word. I love using the word choice. Okay, so what do we do when our kids come to us and they say, they're monsters in my closet and I cannot sleep? 
or there's uh, going to be a monster at school tomorrow and I can't sleep. I uh, Well, there is going to be a monster at school. It's your teacher, maybe, sometimes. <laughs> I've seen that myself. Um, no no great. offense teachers to all the great. teachers that are teachers listening. Teachers <laughs> are wonderful. There are some amazing teachers today uh, in this world. Um, but, but at any rate, yeah, so what do you what do? You do? What do you, how do you respond to that? You say, don't be ridiculous. There are no monsters in your closet and then everything's fine and everyone goes to bed, right? <laughs> that's right. That's, yeah. how it's, that's how it's supposed to work. It's probably the way you're saying it. You're not saying ridiculous, right? Like, did... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what? So really, you know, it's what goes off in your head. You get the alarm, right? And the alarm is, oh my God, they're not sleeping and I'm dead tired. What am I yeah, going to do? Yeah, not this again. Why is my life so horrible? My life is horrible. Why can't this child just get it? Yeah. Why don't they see there's nothing to be scared of? What have I done, you know, to make them like this? Right. We start going into guilt and self-blame. Right. So we really need to step into our power. And I always am saying, you know, when I'm speaking to parents, I'm always saying, come on, you guys, use the force. You guys are Yoda. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And they are our little Padawans that need our help. So step into your power as a parent, right? Because you have it inside of you. You have incredible strengths. Okay, so obviously we don't want to invalidate how our kids feel. That's not getting us anywhere. I think one thing that kids and a lot of adults don't know, and this is the first thing I jotted down on my list, is that sleep is a skill, And it's something that anyone can learn. And it doesn't feel like a skill. It feels like just something that is an instinct, right? And there obviously are instincts to sleep. Um, But the ability to lie down, you know, to assure yourself, to be able to fall asleep, to be able to put yourself back to sleep, those are learned skills. Mm -hmm. And to be able to overcome the what ifing monsters that come up. Those are skills. So really the education is the first thing. So you can tell your kids if they're having trouble sleeping that, listen, this is a skill just like playing the piano and we're going to practice it. And there are things we're going to do to practice it because the anxiety just perpetuates when you can't sleep. And what you become anxious about is the fact that you're going to be anxious, right? If you've ever gone through any period of insomnia, before you go to sleep, you start to worry about going to sleep. Oh my goodness, I'm not going to be able to do it. Let kids know it's a skill and that they can learn it and you're going to help them with the skill. Okay, so let's go over some basics, right? When it comes to sleep. Okay. Basic okay. skills. Basic, basic skills. skills. Sleep okay. hygiene, right? Like a really basic thing. Okay. Create a sleep bubble. I call it a sleep bubble for my kids. And I'm so sorry if I've borrowed that term from someone because I don't feel like I have, but I'm just calling it a sleep bubble. So if someone says, hey, I said sleep bubble, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but create a sleep bubble. And what this means is prior to going to sleep, 30 to 45 minutes prior to going to sleep, there is a bubble that you're creating with a routine that it can include, you know, like bath time, reading, dimming of the lights. My kids are young. They're five and six. So we talk about putting the house to sleep. We go around closing windows and shades, turning off lights. We're putting the house to bed because then we're going to put ourselves to bed. Mm. Spending special time together. If it is at all possible, if you have multiple children, to spend a little bit of time, even like two minutes separately with each one for connection before they sleep. This mm-hmm. can be hugely helpful to that period of anxiety, right? That might pop up when, they, when they're about to fall asleep. So connection time. So you're creating this bubble. It's a routine, essentially, a sleep routine that, of course, doesn't involve things um, like devices and television and stimulating things. Uh, and you do it over and over again. So it's a signal to the brain that, yeah, we're about to calm down and go to sleep. Okay, now let's say that your child lies down, right? And what you were saying, Ed, before, that your daughter goes into this like emotional universe, opens up for her. Absolutely. Yeah. So she starts to worry. Mm -hmm. And is this about like stuff for the next day or stuff that's happened? The next day, the next week, and her lifetime. Mm, Okay. Yeah. Everything. So big, huge worries. All right. So when we're. When our kids are lying down and they're feeling anxious, I really like to know, or if if you're noticing a pattern, right, of the same anxieties creeping up over and over again, 
we really need to look at the anxiety. Is there a productive type of anxiety that's going on uh, that something can be done with a plan, right? Like a plan of action can be put into place. So like this would be, I have a test coming up. And so they can actually do something like study or work or you work with them, right, to help bring the level of anxiety done? Or is this the kind of anxiety like there is a monster in the closet? That's something that there's no amount of work you can do to kind of bring that anxiety down. So let's first identify what type this is. And then if you guys haven't done it already from maybe listening to these podcasts or reading a book on anxiety, or maybe you've used the GoZen programs, you have to personify the worry no matter what age the child is. And you've, if you've listened to our podcast before, Ed does a beautiful job of personifying worry. Can you give us one of your worry voices? I will never. I don't know what to do and I don't know where to go and I don't want to go and I can't go. Oh, worry. It's you again. Can you please? I see you there. Okay. And I know you want your voice to be heard. Yes. But. It's time to go to sleep. And do you want to get anything else out? Because I, I know, know. You- I, I got, it's not going to work out. It's not going to work out. It's never going to work out. It's okay. never going to work out. It's always going to be this way. Always, always, always. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I'm letting you get all your thoughts out and letting them pass by. So personifying the worry can be used in multiple ways. You can teach your child to dispute their worry. So self-disputation, they're they're intentionally having a debate with themselves. And this voice of worry is usually exaggerated. It's usually not accurate. And so they're bringing themselves to a place of accuracy. And it can be done most effectively when you personify it. So depending on the age of the child, make the character relevant to them. Make it a make it a villain if you want to, and maybe like a superhero movie that they that they're into. Or you can make it a doll if they're younger. You can make it a worry bug. In the Go Zen programs, we use Whittle the Worrier, but personify the worry. It's so huge. Okay, a lot of times when we are you know putting our kids to bed and they're starting to worry, we are starting to use our logic to get them not to worry. Well you know, who am I going to sit with on the bus tomorrow? Because I think Christine's going to be sick and she's the person I sit next to all the time. Of course, you'll, you'll, you'll figure it out. Of course, you'll find somebody to sit with. No. Even if, even if it doesn't work with Christine, it'll work with somebody. Of course it will. No, oh, you don't understand. Everyone else just kind of looks at me funny. Honey, I'm it's, not, you're imagining that. I'm telling you right now, it's going to work out. Everything will be fine. Oh, okay. well, <laughs> I do the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very effective, very believable. Yes, thank you. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I never did that to my mom, of course. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, again, as parents, and I do this too with my kids, it is our knee-jerk response often to reassure them and to help them problem solve. But often we jump into the problem solving way too early. What we want to do is we want to connect with them. If they're really feeling anxious and they're feeling it inside their body, they're feeling unsafe. So a countermeasure to them feeling unsafe is to say, you're safe. I know that sounds like a funny thing to say, but honestly, it is the feeling of danger when you're anxious, when you're fight, flight, freeze. They keep adding Fs to this, by the way. Mm -hmm. Fight, flight, freeze freeze, faint, (laughs) fret, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when that response is going off, you feel unsafe. So you can say, I'm here. I hear you. You're safe. I love you. You know, or just hold space physically for them, hold them, you know, and and let them get it out. Yeah. I mean, that uh, just that alone, that in itself is an incredible thing. I know I've heard, you know, my daughter has mantras. She has a couple of them. And one of them is I'm safe. And as basic as it sounds, it's very powerful. It can be very powerful. I love it. I'm Mm. safe. I'm safe. I'm I'm safe. safe. I'm safe. Yeah. So, you know, what I was talking about in that role play just now, that quick role play when I was saying I won't have anyone to sit next to, one of the things that can really help our kids is to make a plan. Plans, contingency plans can help anybody, right? So what you can do with your child is make a plan in advance of anything that they're really worried about. So what will they do in that situation? So if Christine is not on the bus, then I can sit 
next to uh, Joe, who I've met in gym class a few times. Okay, so this is structured as an if-then statement. If the thing that makes me worried happens, then here's my plan. Having a plan can help reduce the feelings of anxiousness. Yeah, I mean, and I feel like this is, you know, we, we talked about at the beginning, you're in the sleep bubble, you're creating the sleep time. All of these things are things that go into relaxing so that you can rest, so that your mind can be at rest. So the if-then statements, the planning, the externalizing of the monsters, um, the speaking out of what is actually going on and indulging it as opposed to shutting it down. Even if you feel you have to do the same thing as a parent because you're going to immediately think, I can't believe they're not going to sleep. This means I won't sleep. I'll never get enough rest. My life is crap. That's yes. that's pretty much the, the <laughs> what goes on. Yes. I'm not going to get enough rest. My life is crap. Now you got you have to break that down. You have to listen to that and say, "Oh, I'm really scared that I won't be okay. So I'm safe too, and this is not permanent. And if this happens and she stays up a little while, then I'm going to." Um, see if I can meditate or do something for myself afterwards that will help me. Yes, okay? I love that. You can do an if-then statement for yourself, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. And if you practice it, if you're, because that's going to happen immediately. That's the reaction. No, Nobody hears a kid, their kid saying, I can't get to sleep because I'm worried about something and, and says, oh, that's just fine. No one says that in their mind. What you say in your mind is, this sucks. I can't believe I'm doing this. My life is crap. <laughs> I'm going to guarantee that that's what goes on. <laughs> not um, again. Yeah, not again. Yes. Whatever version you have, that's what's going on. So we have to address that in some way, even if it's for two seconds. Uh, here come those feelings again. Okay. All right. I hear you. Okay, feelings. That's just what happens. Uh, I'm going to be present. I'm going to take a breath. And of course, I'm okay and we'll get through this. I'm tired. I feel tired, but I'm going to take care of myself. I know that I can. So what Ed is doing right now is he is speaking to himself, right? There's the worried voice and then there is him. There's Ed. Yeah. yeah. And what you can do for fun too, if you're listening to this and you're near somewhere where you can draw, don't draw if you're driving, please. That's Is that unsafe? Drawing and driving? It sounds yes, unsafe. Drawing and driving is unsafe. You, yes, you, it's, yeah. it's wrong. Don't drive, it's against drive, the don't law. Don't drive and draw. Right. <laughs> right. There are groups for that, support groups. Mm -hmm. Um but if you're not driving, you can take a pen and you can draw the worried version of yourself. What do you look like when you're worried? And then draw one of those talk bubbles and write in the worried words. So actually draw this out. It can be so powerful. And then draw yourself the non-worried version. Draw another talk bubble and talk back to it. So this is instead of verbalizing it, right, you can also write it and really reinforce it. And you will notice if you do this more than once that you're saying the same things to yourself over and over again. And yeah. And that, it, that voice needs to be heard. And, and you know, don't get a DWD, which is driving while drawing. Uh, don't do that <laughs> at all. Have you ever tried to do this, Ed? Have you ever taken your index finger and your thumb? I know this is really, these are complicated instructions, okay? Yeah, for me. <laughs> and yeah. rub, rub them together. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a mindfulness intervention, right? A very, very tiny, simple one. What do you feel when you rub them together? Uh, connected and present and alert. Connected, present, alert, maybe some friction yeah. between the fingers. Sure. So this is a way to bring us back into the moment, right? That you can teach to your kids. You know, your mind is wandering into the future. If it's wandering into the past, then rub your two fingers together, your thumb and your index finger, rub them together mm. and bring yourself into the present moment. I think that it's really important to find a mindfulness exercise that our kids connect with. In the Gozen programs, we teach four, seven, eight breathing, which is a yogic breathing technique where you breathe in for four. Let's do it together. Ed. Sure. Can you breathe in through your nose for four? One, two, three, four. Hold for seven, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Breathe out of your mouth for eight. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. Four, seven, eight. Breathe in for four through your nose, hold for seven, breathe out of your mouth for eight. How do you feel? Um, more, a little more relaxed. Good. You know, it's a breathing technique that you can teach to your kids depending on your their age and their state of being. I will say that if your child is feeling really anxious, counting can be tough sometimes. And sometimes it can be tough anyway, where they get confused or they get very technical about it. Wait a second, was I supposed to breathe in through my mouth or my nose? How many, four or seven? And that's okay, right? So we don't want to get caught up in the technique. Um, what we want to do is try to practice breathing. So for younger kids, often we do things like, you know, pretend you're holding a cup of hot chocolate and it's so hot you want to blow the steam. And so they take a breath through their nose and they blow out through their mouth. I'm sure you've heard of blowing candles. I'm sure we've talked about it before. I try to say, you know, hold the candle as far away as you can and blow hard because what that does is we're trying to extend the exhale. And if you extend the exhale, they automatically are breathing deeply because you have to take a deep breath in order to blow for a long time, right? Um, or sometimes with really little kids, I like to use a straw and a button. So you get a straw and you put a button on a table and you ask them to push the button without touching it with a straw, right, with their breath for as far as they can push it. So they have to take a deep breath in in order to blow out through the straw. So there's lots of different ways you can get kids to practice breathing. With any of this, it's always better to practice outside of the moment. And so then when they're in the moment where they need the breathing, it's easier for them to recollect. And if you have a, if you have a teen and it's an older kid, maybe, um, you know, maybe you can do a project with your family, which is um, draw your nighttime routine, draw your sleep bubble and what goes on inside of it. And, and that could be for an older kid. Also, I feel like those physical techniques like maybe it's the index finger and the thumb, or maybe it's snapping, or maybe it's the thing we used to do in, in camp, which is that you rub your hands together and then you make believe like it's a rainstorm and you can, you do the raindrops with your snapping. I mean, any physical cues for an older kid are good, but have them design their own thing and then, and then, and then compare it, you know, do yours and have them do theirs. I love that. And if you guys do that, please share them with us. We would love to see them. You can go to gozen.com forward slash dear anxiety and share. All right. So I want to talk about a, a, you know, one that everybody knows, but it's so hard to do because we are addicted to our devices. But a lot of times, you know, we'll do a quick check of our phone or our kids will have trouble sleeping. So they're playing a guided meditation, let's say on a phone or an iPad, but the blue light that's emitted from those devices wakes our brain up essentially and messes with our circadian rhythm. So if your child is using a device closer to sleep, um, they sell these blue light blockers. <laughs> Do you remember those blue blockers they used to sell? Oh, yeah. That just reminds me. Totally, yeah, <laughs> that look. Uh, yeah, it was a good look. They used to sell these glasses. Uh, I think it was an infomercial in like the 80s or the 90s. It was a horrible look, mm -hmm. but for some reason I'm remembering that. Yeah. And in any case, this is not that. Okay, <laughs> These are clear glasses with no prescription that blocks the admittance of the light. Also, there are screens and other things that you can do to prevent the light from hitting your eyes and waking up your system. And then, you know, kind of just coming back to meditation, I love the loving kindness meditation it's such a beautiful meditation. I've been doing it with my kids and other kids, and kids really tend to like this one. I think it's because it's interesting to them that not only are you sending love and kindness to yourself, but you're also sending it out to your friends, to your teachers, perhaps maybe to someone who hasn't been kind to you. So it's interesting. But I would love you know, maybe to kind of tie up some of these tips we're giving, if we can just do a small portion of the loving kindness meditation together. Sure. Absolutely. Okay. So this is a meditation that is focused on nurturing compassion, kindness, goodwill, and love for yourself and for others. And the origins are in Buddhist traditions, but it's practiced widely across cultures. And it's been the focus of really extensive research by psychologists, which is so interesting. So it's been shown to improve social connections, to improve vagal tone, to improve gray matter in the brain, like it can grow your brain. 
Wow. <laughs> That's amazing, wow. right? Yeah. Um, significantly decrease PTSD, anxiety, depression. There are amazing benefits of this particular meditation. Okay, so we, you know, we're just going to do a little part of it. So I'm going to say a line. And then, Ed, if you can repeat the line, that would be wonderful. I will. And I'll say, I'm going to take my blue blockers off for this. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. Right. Perfect. Okay. okay. May I be happy, healthy, and peaceful. May I be happy, healthy, and peaceful. May I let go of sadness and bad feelings. May I let go of sadness and bad feelings. May I be free from anger. May I be free from anger. May I be free from pain. May I be free from pain. May I be free from difficulties. May I be free from difficulties. May I be free from suffering. May I be free from suffering. May I be healthy, happy, and peaceful. May I be healthy, happy, and peaceful. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be at peace. May I be at peace. And that's it. You know, if you guys are interested in the full loving kindness script, we have it on GoZen at GoZen.com forward slash love. Now, I have listened to that meditation with my daughter during sleep time. And I have to say, and Rini, your voice is great, and the way you do it is terrific. It's very powerful. Thank you. Yeah. Very effective, very powerful. Something really great to do at, at sleep time. I was a little skeptical of doing it with my kids, again, ages five and six, because sometimes they're like, we don't want to do this. They love it. They love it. So just try it. You know, it can't, it can't hurt to try, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's just... just as, the, as the wise... Confucius once said, it can't hurt to try. Well, Confucius, that was his uh, bumper sticker, and that's what kind of put him <laughs> on the map. That was his keep calm and carry on. That's right. So I think we might have to wrap it up. Yes. Um, but do we have any announcements? Well, we always have announcements. I mean, one of the things that Rini mentioned before is please share whatever's going on in your life uh, in whatever form you want, in the form of a voice message, which you can send, in the form of a an email um, anything that you want to share, you can share it and send it to gozen, G O Z E N dot com forward slash dear anxiety, gozen dot com forward slash dear anxiety. Listen to us, share it with your friends. Let's keep the conversation going and let's build our community on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, wherever you get your podcasts. You can find us on iTunes at bit.ly, B I T dot L Y forward slash dear anxiety bit.ly b-i-t dot l-y forward slash dear anxiety on itunes thank you for all the great reviews thank you for listening really and please subscribe if you can yes you guys thank you so much for the reviews sometimes we get people emailing us in or leaving reviews and the reviews really help us to reach more people so if you have a moment to go to itunes or wherever you listen to this podcast and leave a review it's incredibly helpful and we're very grateful so thank you thank you and uh every week we have a different topic and next week who knows exactly what it's going to be but i can promise you it'll be it'll be real and it'll be something that we we can relate to as people and uh, and put on your blue blockers for the week. Do what you have to do and keep coming back. It works if you work it. And I'm Ed Krasnick. I'm Rini Jane. See you next time. Thanks, guys. <laughs>